Today, we got our first ever stage rework. With the maps being in such an awful spot, this is the first of probably many changes, and how good it is is gonna be very important, as well as give a good indicator as to what we can expect from future reworks. So today, I'm gonna go through starting with comparisons between the old and new Mahi, and talking about my overall review after. I'd highly recommend sticking around to the end, because I'm gonna talk a bit about how the map feels to play, and I think outside of just the comparisons in recon mode, this is one where the experience of playing the stage greatly influenced my opinion. With that being said, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more stage reviews in the future, and let's get into it. We'll be starting with the Turf War layout, but I'm going to cover something briefly important for all modes, and that is the spawn region. This has been extended drastically, with this very highest area that nobody can access being moved across the right side a little bit further. This primary lower area has a bit of extension on the left side, as well as a major extension on the right side. This gives much more defensive terrain and area to build your special for retake. The most major addition to your spawn though is this rail. This is now here in all modes on its own dedicated platform, and while most walls are uninkable, there is one wall on the back that makes it accessible for enemies to get into this part of your spawn, which I think is fine. Turf War is the only mode to also keep this ramp here, so in all of the ranked modes, this is the only way people can get further into your base. I think this rail platform is a nice little bit of extra defensive option. It makes it easier to bomb your snipe as well as gives you a better vantage point. You can see much more easily if people are kind of under this ledge here, and that's really useful with how strong of a spawn that is. The snipe area has some extensions that kind of resemble Splatoon 1, with this graded platform that you can use, now featuring some new blocks up here, giving you a little bit of extra cover and places to move. The middle of the map is made significantly larger. Because of it, these blocks now have grading platforms, allowing you to be able to go between them a bit more easily. This area now has this brown pole instead of the prior two block, but you can still use it to wall jump up to the high ground, admittedly being a little bit more difficult. The left side by the islands now has this great bridge connecting them, as well as this platform being attached to the island instead of slightly further apart from it. On top of it, both of these islands have a slight extension, and there is a new third one over here, with a small bit of cover attached to this balloon thing. When the water level drops, there's some changes as well. The most notable being that this block now has a shortcut. You can wall jump up to this new grading platform as another way to get to the islands, great for both defenders and attackers. This new island, a bit unfortunately in my opinion, simply just recedes into the map terrain, so this just kind of becomes a lowered area rather than staying as a high ground option. However, to make up for that, you can see that there is a pretty drastic extension in ground here, allowing you to poke snipe from a different angle and get under this graded area. A lot of people speculated that the Splatoon 1 Mahi flank might be back even if it is a smaller quantity here, but unfortunately no. With the wall being completely uninkable and no platform down here, it seems like this won't be an added option. That's all the major changes for Turf War though, so let's take a look at the other modes. Before we get into the next mode, let me tell you about an awesome event coming up. On November 4th, you have the Big Dapple 3. With Metro Inc. in collaboration with Gen Game and AON, they are hosting a live Splatoon tournament at Brookland. All competitors of all skill levels and spectators are welcome. In addition to the tournament, they're going to have themed drinks, merchandise, set up for free play, and a great atmosphere to meet up with other players in the region. Registration at start.gg is necessary to play, and the event will be live streamed on twitch.tv slash gengame. You can join their Discord and follow the Metro Inc. Twitter below for more info. It'll be in the description. Like I mentioned before, from here on out in all the other modes, this ramp is gone. You can still get back to your base with this platform here, but it's the only way back. Personally, I think a defending sponge in that corner would have been nice, but it's not a big deal. This platform has been extended further up and now features a new climbable wall on the side. However, wall jumping backward here, while possible, is significantly, and I mean it, significantly harder to do. There is, however, a new great platform attached to it though, so this is still much easier. The zone shape also now has a Z block in the middle of it, though the zone size seems to be about the same. The water level still drops around the 60 point marker, and pretty much everything here is the same as it was in Turf War, meaning this jump is still possible, including the wall jump variant with a slightly different block. On top of that, this jump to the right side is still possible. You can of course do this one onto the now paintable wall, but the high ground block still works as a jump as well, though it's still a little bit difficult. Besides that though, pretty much everything here is the same as Turf War, so this wasn't changed too much, which I think is fine. Tower control spawn area is slightly different with this extra terrain added in your spawn region, as well as the right side being modified. Besides that, a lot of this actually still resembles the old tower control layout. The islands on the left side are a little bit different. There's actually a second rafter here and a little block, so it's much easier to get to the islands, and this new island allows you to push this route a lot faster. There's also this block added, which allows both 
attackers and defenders to get back up to the snipe, even when the tower is in its lower part, which in the prior version would not be possible. This is a very big addition that I think helps a lot. The terrain in middle was made slightly different with this brand new block ink on some sides and this brand new bridge across the map, keeping it easier to go across. The trench is also slightly bigger in mid. The second checkpoint is now further back and more importantly connects with this block, making it easier to walk on and off the tower, which is a nice addition. The tower jump over here is still possible and like before, the water level does drop at the end of this checkpoint. The trench still comes up from the middle of the map, but now features this wider bit and little block in mid. On top of that, with the island shifting, this part still goes into the terrain, but this new block allows you to jump up here a bit more easily on both sides, so the islands still remain fairly useful. The tower path was actually changed a bit here. The third checkpoint is much farther away, and it's also next to another block you can walk on and off of as just kind of a nice little touch here. Once the tower goes through this point, it does give you this jump, though I'm not sure why you'd use it considering how close you are to the goal, and the goal is also slightly further back. This makes the last checkpoint much easier to defend and hold as that team, rather than going too far away, and prevents the checkpoint from being back here on Snipe, where it was very easy to camp it prior. Rainmaker has its fair share of free signs still. You can still see one over here, one back here, and even one being added on this far island here. They are being extra safe with the campiness here. Besides that, the spawn is pretty close to how it is in tower control. The middle of the map has seen some changes, but still features the similar double ramp, double block layout. You could definitely see the size increase of the map, and there's more of these odd ledges that provide some cover. This is especially good for Splatanas. Of course, this jump is still pumped. This jump over here is still possible, though very difficult. Luckily, with this tiny new other island they've added, there's a much easier alternate option, so the islands are still fairly usable. That's nice. The Rainmaker now resides on this little block, and you can see that the checkpoints were actually moved. They're slightly closer. Most importantly, this means this red checkpoint is now much easier to get to, being a solid breakaway. Once it drops, it's also an easy way to jump across this gap. The water level still drops at this point, and this is where you can see this little block also doubles as a way to keep the islands more accessible when the water drops instead of having to solely rely on this ramp. And uh, once again, more very nice Splatana roller spots, so that's cool. From here, the Rainmaker pedestal is slightly, and I mean slightly, further back. I kind of wish they had a ramp and pushed it further back into spawn back here. By the way, you could do this checkpoint jump across. Having it be a little bit further would have been nice, but we'll talk about that more later. Thankfully, this jump is still a thing. They didn't remove it. Finally is Clam Blitz Mahi. The spawn is again resembling the tower and Rainmaker very variation. However, there are some notable differences. It seems like the basket is slightly, and again, I mean slightly further back. There's a bit less clam spawns on the stage overall, and of course with the larger size, they're a lot more spread out. This block here now barely allows you to make this jump onto Snipe, which is pretty cool, as well as just allowing the islands to be a bit easier to reach. Outside of that, that ramp and block here is still very accessible. The middle of the map features this block over here from Splat Zones to add a little bit more cover, and more importantly, adds this block, giving you a jump alternate path to the ramp. Even if it's close to it, it is still a very nice alternative that allows you to get onto the other side of the snipe. A big change though is instead of 50 points, 60 points are all that's needed for the water level to drop, allowing it to happen slightly faster. This again, doesn't have as many changes, but it is really nice to have the water level down this early, especially since it's much easier to get to the islands from the right side, making a route like this much more feasible to go for. But that's really all the major layout changes here. Okay, so I know from talking about it that it seems rather small, and honestly, I do have some criticisms I'll get to real quick. It's really unfortunate the odd tower trench thing wasn't changed, and I really wish more of the layouts could have been closer to the base splat zones and turf war layout, as it features a bit more open of mid and more cover. And of course, the snipe route not being fully added back from Splatoon 1 was a huge missed opportunity. It would have been simplified here, a lot easier to stop, but still would have been nice to happen. That would have allowed four routes, far left, middle, around the right side, and the island's flank to get into the enemy base or get back into your base, which would have made it feel really open. But even without that, the three routes back are still more than plenty. So it doesn't feel as bad as I thought. And honestly, this is where I think playing the stage is going to improve people's opinion more. One thing that I mentioned a little bit but is really hard to understand is just how much larger the stage actually feels. Especially in the middle of the map, it feels almost as open as Crab Leg Capital now. It's seriously crazy just how many places you can move, and it's very easy to get into a lot of different locations. This means fights happen a lot more spread out, there's a lot more options to move in, and in general, it just feels like it's very open. And the few new routes they did add, like that new grate on the island, honestly feel amazing. 
The stage still feels a little bit better when you're in your spawn, but I think that's the weakest point. Once both teams are able to get in mid is where these renovations really shine, in my opinion. But even without that, the improved areas definitely do still make it flow a lot better, and there's always a decent amount of options in and out of your base. While Tower and Rainmaker are still a bit limited due to their size, random trench, and just in general being a bit too fast for how quick it is to get from mid to the enemy base, they definitely feel more playable now. I wouldn't really mind rolling them in solo queue, whereas I usually try to avoid them. Splat Zones and Turf War were already great, and I think will be even better, with the zones layout being by far the best zones map in the game to me, which is a huge accomplishment. Clan Blitz, however, is where I think there is the most improvement. The reduction in spawns, larger map size, water dropping faster, and just general layout changes improve it way more than I initially thought. Given the lack of cover in mid and still high potential to snowball when scoring, I'm not sure if it would be a competitively viable map, but I think it has a decent chance and I honestly do want to test it a lot. If it's not a big issue, its open layout is a very nice amount of variety compared to most of the Splatoon 3 stages, of course. So, as a whole, I would say I'm still happy about this, especially as I play it more. I do think when it comes to future map reworks, the amount of added routes we'll be seeing might be a bit smaller than what I want. However, what I think we're getting in exchange is much more open mids. Splatoon 2 had a problem of flawed mid fights, but their mids were a lot tinier. If the middle of the stage could be as open as something like Crab Leg or Maki, I think this will be much smaller of a problem. So honestly, I'm looking forward to how they adjust some of the stages, and I think this larger size of mid could be a theme that I think will be an overall giant improvement, especially on other condensed stages like Mid Speed Metalworks. But with that being said, we'll have to see how often these happen. Hopefully once every patch, so one and a half months. That would be really great for spicing up the content in the game. Let me know what you guys think of the Mahi Mahi rework, and I'll see you guys next time.